there it is. The NES version of one of the best arcade shoot 'em ups of all time. Now to start off, there is no real story to this game since, well, it's an arcade game, but it does take place in 1942, obviously, during the Second World War, as you presumably play as an American pilot trying to single-handedly take down the Japanese Flying Empire, which of course opens the door for the very obvious joke that this game being made by Japanese people is a game about Americans killing Japanese people. But hey, that's just how World War II was, no way to get around it. But anyway, now we'll move on to the actual game part of this, in which you fly across the screen in your fighter and try and take down as many enemies as you can while avoiding their bullets. Because if you get hit once or even crash into them, you're dead. But luckily it's the same for them. And since you have unlimited ammo, it's best to just keep spamming shots all over the place. Although having said that, this game does not allow you to just hold down the button. You actually do have to keep pressing it in order to shoot, which is definite classic arcade style in which you just keep pressing it until it feels like your finger is about to fall off, and I'd argue that's definitely more so true here than there. Although, considering that this is the NES, if you really wanted to, you could just get a turbo controller and just break the game. But having said all that, obviously not all enemies are going to go down in one shot, there's going to be bigger planes that take a few more to go down. And then combine this with the fact that the farther you get into the game, the more dense amount of enemies you're going to be going up against means that you need some serious upgrades in order to continue your survival. And as luck would have it, they do exist in this game and they do help out a lot. And you get them by either taking out bigger enemies or by taking out a set of red fighters that fly in and then fly out, so you have to take out all of them or else you'll miss out of your chance. And then you get your power up, whether it be bigger shots that help you take down bigger enemies quicker or two extra fighters that allow you to shoot more bullets into the air. But of course you need to be there very vigilant because if you die you end up losing all your power-ups and you gotta get them all again. And that more or less wraps up the gameplay outside of the bosses this game has. Or I should say boss, as in there's only one that you fight multiple times. Yeah, every few rounds you go up against a huge airplane that you need to dodge all its bullets and then take out all of its engines. Which can be quite tricky, honestly, because it shoots out a good amount of bullets at you and you have to get, like, really close to take out the, uh, the propellers. It's a pretty good boss, it just sucks that it's literally the only one in the game. And, well, to continue on with the negative stuff found in this game, um, it's kind of unfortunate that there's, like, no like, change of setting, I guess you can call it. Like, the background most of the time is just gonna be water, and only a few times do you actually go on to, like, an actual island and see land. Which I want to say is just because they kind of got lazy and didn't do anything with it, but at the same time, this is the Pacific, so that being water and barely any land makes sense. But it making sense doesn't make it any more interesting. Another knock I have against this game is that although it's an arcade game and all of them are like this, it's... Well, it's just repetitive. Which, I mean, isn't that big a deal, because again, they all did this, and it's just supposed to be you keep going, you keep fighting to try and survive for as long as you can and get a high score. Except in this game's case, there is an actual ending if you beat all the stages. But the thing is, this game has 32 stages, which is just way too many. And in my opinion, the game should have just cut off at half, like 16 or maybe just 20. And then finally, we have an issue that I'm kind of on the fence about. That being the fact that this game seems to have an unlimited amount of continues, which I suppose comes from the fact that when they did this port, they realized people probably weren't going to beat the game in one set of lives. Combined with this being the home port meant that it wouldn't be gobbling up quarters. So Capcom decided to give us basically a breather freebie, which I mean, I 100% get it. It's just that there's two things that I really don't like about this. The first being that since now you have unlimited lives, the game goes from a test of skill to just a test of endurance, really. You know, something along the lines of you knowing you don't have to try as hard because there's no failure, you could just keep going over and over again. And that's kind of like going into my second point, which is this kind of like undercuts the arcade experience that this game was trying to provide. You know how like in an actual arcade, you would be trying your damnedest because you only want to spend one quarter and see how long you could survive with it. And then when you do eventually die, trying to frantically get another one and put it into the machine. That's not going to happen here. 
there. But hey, at the end of the day, what were they gonna do? Make an add-on to the NES that makes you need to put in quarters? But anyway, with that all said, I believe that's everything I need to talk about with this game. Actually, no, I never brought up the music. With it quite literally being a beeping sound with a drum beat. Which, considering how actually not half bad it is, is quite impressive how minimalist it is. Although, at the same time, I could definitely see people getting very annoyed at it very quickly. Alright, now I'm done talking about this game. So yeah, although this might not be 100% authentic to its original version, it's still a solid pour of a solid arcade game. You know, going back to the music for a second here, I do find it funny that when I listen to both soundtracks, like the original and this, I actually preferred the NES version of the music instead of the arcades, which I honestly don't get because it's the arcade version. It should sound better, but it doesn't.